Over 6 billion people around the world drink milk or use it in their daily meals, and most of them never think twice about where it really comes from. Behind every carton on the shelf is a global system producing nearly 900 million tons of milk each year. It's cleaned, chilled, spun, heated, sealed, and shipped at a scale that most people never get to see. So how does milk go from a cow to a bottle in your fridge without losing a drop along the way? Let's break it all down here at the Process World. Hi, kids. Oh, that's not good. Got milk. Let's start at the very beginning, on the farm. The milk you grab from the store shelf doesn't just show up overnight. It all begins with dairy cows, raised specifically for their ability to produce large quantities of milk. Breeds like Holsteins are the most common because they produce more milk than any other. In the Middle East, dairy farming looks a little different. Countries like Saudi Arabia have built massive high-tech dairy operations right in the desert. One standout example is Almeray one of the world's largest vertically integrated dairy companies. They manage over 180,000 cows and produce millions of liters of milk daily using climate-controlled barns, imported feed, and cutting-edge automation to handle everything from milking to storage. Despite the tough environment, they've turned desert land into a thriving dairy hub. Once the cows are ready for milking, the real work kicks in. And no, it's not just someone on a stool with a bucket. It's a full-on system. You see, most modern dairy farms use automated milking machines. These machines are designed to be gentle and precise. They use vacuum suction to draw milk from the cow's udder, and sensors ensure that everything is done safely. The entire process is controlled to keep the cow comfortable and the milk clean. Before milking starts, each cow's udder is cleaned using warm water or disinfectant wipes. This isn't just for hygiene, it directly affects the milk's quality. After cleaning, the machine attaches to each teat, and the milk starts flowing through sanitized pipes straight into a large refrigerated storage tank. The tank keeps the milk chilled at around 4 degrees Celsius, which helps prevent bacteria from growing. The goal here is simple, keep the milk clean, cold, and moving. And once the tank starts to fill up, it's time for the next big step getting all that fresh milk from the farm to the factory without wasting a drop. In this stage, specialized tanker trucks are sent out to collect it. And these aren't just your regular fuel trucks painted white, they're insulated stainless steel tankers with built-in refrigeration that keeps the milk at the same temperature it was stored at on the farm. Before any milk is pumped into the truck, a trained technician takes a sample straight from the farm's tank. That sample is tested on the spot for things like temperature, odor, and any signs of contamination. If it doesn't pass, the batch doesn't move. Quality control starts before the wheels even turn. Once cleared, the milk is pumped into the tanker using a sealed system that prevents any outside air or bacteria from getting in. The driver logs the time and temperature, then sets off towards the factory. Every route and delivery is tracked to make sure that the milk arrives within strict time limits, usually within 24 to 48 hours of milking. This logistics game is especially critical in the Middle East, where scorching temperatures can challenge even the most advanced refrigeration systems. During transport, nothing is left to chance. The temperature is constantly monitored and once the milk reaches the factory, it's tested again before it's accepted. This step is about protecting the entire chain. No matter how good the milk is on the farm, if something goes wrong on the road, it won't make it past the factory gate. Now that it's arrived, the milk's about to go through some serious changes. The next phase is all about turning raw milk into the kind you see in cartons. Let's head inside the factory. But before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now, moving on. Now that the milk has passed all the safety checks, it moves into one of the most technical parts of the factory process, standardization and separation. This is where the fat content of the milk is carefully adjusted, depending on whether it's going to be whole milk, low fat, or skim. The first step is using a machine called a centrifuge. It spins the milk at very high speeds, 
and this spinning causes the cream to separate from the rest of the liquid. The cream is then collected on its own while the remaining liquid becomes skim milk. From there, the factory team can create different types of milk by mixing the cream back in at specific ratios. For example, whole milk usually is around 3.25% fat, while low fat might be 1% or 2%. Skim milk has almost none. Everything is measured carefully using automated systems to make sure that every bottle has the same consistency every time. This process is also important for meeting local food regulations. In many countries, milk has to be sold with the exact fat percentages stated on the label. So whether someone is buying full cream milk or trying to keep things light with skim, they're getting exactly what the label promises. After the milk is adjusted for fat, it heads into homogenization. This step is all about texture. Milk has fat globules that tend to clump together and float to the top over time. Homogenization spreads those fat particles evenly throughout the liquid so that the milk stays smooth and consistent from top to bottom. To make that happen, the milk is forced through a special machine at extremely high pressure. The machine pushes it through tiny nozzles that break down the fat molecules into smaller sizes. Once that's done, the fat stays mixed in evenly, and you don't end up with that layer of cream sitting on the top of your milk. Homogenization doesn't change the flavor or nutrients, it just improves the look and feel. Most people are used to the milk looking clean and uniform, and this step guarantees that every bottle delivers exactly that. Now it's time for the most important steps in the entire process, pasteurization. This is where milk is heated just enough to destroy any harmful bacteria while keeping its natural flavor and nutrients intact. It's a step that protects millions of people every day without them even realizing it. The most common method in factories is called high temperature short time or HTST. The milk is quickly heated to about 72 degrees Celsius for just 15 seconds, then cooled down right away. That short burst of heat is enough to kill off the bacteria like Salmonella, E. coli, and Listeria, which can be dangerous if left untreated. In some cases, especially for milk meant to stay fresh on the shelf for longer, factories use a method called Ultra High Temperature, or UHT. That one heats the milk to about 135 degrees Celsius for around 2 to 4 seconds. UHT milk can last months without refrigeration until the seal is broken, which make it a common choice in areas without steady access to cold storage. No matter what method is used, the goal stays the same. Keep the milk safe to drink without adding chemicals or preservatives. Pasteurization is one of the main reasons that factory milk has a reliable shelf life and a strong safety record. Now that the milk has been cleaned, balanced, smooth and heated, it's almost ready to head out. But before that, some batches get an extra nutrient boost. This is where essential vitamins like A and D are added to the milk. It's done for one reason to help people get nutrients they might not be getting from their regular diet. These vitamins are added at very precise amounts, using automated equipment that makes sure that every bottle gets the right dose. Not all countries require fortification, but in many places, especially in North America and parts of Europe, it's a standard part of milk processing. Nevertheless, this step is quick, but it makes a real difference. Once the vitamins are mixed in, the milk is fully processed and nutritionally complete. All that's left now is to package it up and get it ready for store shelves. This part of the journey is all about cleanliness, speed, and precision. Every step is automated to make sure that the milk stays fresh and untouched. The milk flows straight from the processing tanks into filling machines. These machines are designed to handle thousands of liters per hour pouring milk into containers like plastic jugs, cartons, or glass bottles. Before each container is filled, it's sterilized using steam or UV light to remove any potential germs. That way, the milk stays as clean going into the bottle as it was coming out of the tank. Once filled, each container is sealed tightly, either with a cap or a heat-sealed lid, to lock in freshness. Then it moves down the line to labeling machines. These machines print all the important info, the type of milk, fat content, expiration date, and even the batch number. That batch code is key because it helps factories trace every bottle back to the farm if something ever needs to be checked. After labeling, the containers are grouped into crates or boxes and sent straight to cold storage. 
everything moves as fast as possible to make sure that the milk stays at the right temperature and gets to stores in the best condition possible. So now that you've seen what really goes into making a single bottle of factory milk, from the cow to the carton, here's the question. If this much care, tech, and science go into something as simple as milk, what else in your fridge has a secret story waiting to be uncovered? Share your thoughts in the comments section.